Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this is the state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public on the bulletin board of the municipal building by mailing the notice to the news record and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Mr. McGeehee? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7 provides that the governing body has the discretion to prohibit or regulate the active participation of the public in any meeting, and whereas desire of the governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood, that it does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions, discussions of the governing body at all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On TV land. Are we on TV today? Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's no one here, so. But I'm sure the, 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 throngs, the throngs will come in. Um, we're going to move this budget, uh, this agenda around a little bit. We're going to do the uh, budget overview, both the revenue side, which we haven't really heard yet, and also, and we can be form informal today, what Sonia has done uh, on the budget cuts from last <laughs> meeting. We can go over all that. Then we're going to have to go into close and talk about personnel. And we can come back out and deal with capital. And then at the end of the day, we'll see where we are. So we're going? We're going to do the budget overview first. Right. And um, <coughs> so do you want to do the <coughs> I don't know. Let's see. There's no request. I don't, think I don't so. have it electronically. No. Expenses here. Capital improvements. I have three versions of that. Helen. I have capital improvements, personnel. <coughs> Excuse me one second. We're just. No worries. Sorry, the revenues weren't printed out for you, so we're just getting them printed out now. Okay, so let's go. Let's go over your the cuts that you made to operating. So if you look at the latest sheet, and just for visual purposes, it's color coded in green. Any changes that I've made? Right. <coughs> Looking at it. just fill this up. Gotcha. Okay. Is this a different sheet than you gave us before? Same thing. Same thing. If we just go through one by one, um, first few changes I made was to add a cost of four thousand dollar increase to the community coalition on race, Sprinkle Avenue Partnership, Maplewood Village Alliance. Where are you looking? The first sheet. It is the changes that I've made with the green. Oh, gotcha. Yes. The green. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So then, uh, so for those four organizations uh, across the board, I know they had had specific increases, but um, I think at this point in time with our budget, budgetary um, 
constraints, I think $1,000 across the board would be sufficient for them. That would, that's my recommendation. And then with the training, there was just, uh, there was a, t a typo here where I meant to just keep the training budget at the same. Um, I have a couple of trainings coming up, so. And so then. At a five or 10? It's 10. So you wanna look at the admin rec, rec recommended, that second yeah. line. Hmm. Okay. Um, some of the other uh, overall um, changes that we've made were to the salary and wages. We didn't put in any prospective increases or because we don't know what they'll be. We haven't had that discussion yet. So that's not, that's, that was removed from here along with any uh, benefits that would have affected that. Um, if we go to the second page, uh, some of the uh, decreases that I've made in red um, had to do with just some historical patterns here. I just cut a little bit off of postage. We do, I, although we just went up a thousand dollars, we and postage has gone up. We do get a um, we do get a um, a discounted rate, yeah, for bulk mailings for for the machine we have. And I think that we should actually look into trying to minimize as much as we can in terms of postage and mailings. I mean, we can't help the tax uh, stuff or things like that that we're required to do, but there are possibly things that we should look into uh, when we're you know, sending out and, min and maximize our uh, web-based um, oh, email list. <clears throat> Then some of the other decreases, uh, again, based on some historical patterns, just decreased $1,000 here for SOMACOM, contractual services, uh, $2,000 decrease here. Um, and, and then let's, we go down to uh, in, uh, information technology, uh, line item 209 network administrator. Um, I decreased that by $5,000. Um, And then the third page. I'm sorry. Could we go back? <clears throat> could we go back there? Sure. Network administrator. What do we mean there? That is the IT vendor that we use. Uh, that for, for, our, for everything. For everything. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we're decreasing that because we didn't spend as much, and just based on the what the new rate was, we don't we don't need that much. So. Um, on the postage at the top of the page again, mm -hmm. you're recommending a thousand dollar decrease because historically, uh, what we've been allotted or allotting rather has more than been enough. Yeah, and I think we 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 should absolutely look look into other ways of disseminating some information to minimize you know the postage use. Right, because so. I think have we use significant postage to mail out newsletters to seniors uh, who may not otherwise be on digital platforms and uh, just want to make it clear that that's not going to be affected. I don't know. You don't expect that. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't expect that. Okay, great. On the record. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we go to the following page under the prosecutor. I just uh, decreased that by $200 for the dues meetings and seminars based again on some historical Patterns. Um, there's a note here where the the following line item for engineering salaried, we decreased that based on um, was was that for the what we put on the side for the um, capital, which we decreased it by ninety four thousand. Which line item? Is that? That's for sal the engineering salary and wages. Engineering salary and wages were decreased to remove right the cap the way we uh, funded through the capital ordinance. Right. Correct. So it wouldn't affect the um, OE budget. I'm sorry. Oh. I missed. Sorry. Thank you. Actually, even hard to hear right here. <laughs> okay. You can bring your mic a little closer too. Okay. Thank you. In the engineering budget, line item 214, GIS maintenance, uh, I've also decreased that. Um, and that would, could possibly decrease some more. Our assistant township administrator has been looking into ways where 
the fact that we're bringing on spatial data logic, a lot of what the modules they have uh, could cover some of these GIS modules that we currently have with another vendor. So just to keep that in mind that um, we're looking into other ways where, and softwares that we have that perhaps weren't used and um, so some of those expenses have been cut back. I believe so much as uh, 10,000. So this is uh, we're hoping that'll go away and we'll just use the right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so um, engineering ha with ViewWorks, um, you know, they've been we've met, we've been meeting with SDL to talk about how those two systems were to integrate. And um, we've had a couple work orders systems for years, apparently, and we haven't even used those modules. So those will go away. So um, it's how does this affect? Um Bazer Consulting, whom we're using for a lot of this GIS <clears throat> stuff, and we're relying on them to expand. We, we still have them. We're we're going to be using them for the GIS part of it, but there were other modules that were in there, and eventually we could just switch over. I see. Just keep it all SDL. Once SDL gives right. us what we need. And that's it. Okay. Right, so... Uh, and plus, Mazer's in the middle of working on some things for us, so we don't want to completely right. phase right. it out this year. And this is just some line item I removed over in the uh, community entrepreneurship and economic development. Um, with regard to consultants, we decreased it by $5,000. Um, I think we're... Consultants in engineering? No, that's no, for the economic... Um, entre entrepreneurship and uh, economic development, community entrepreneurship. Well, oh, that's a, that is a mouthful. It is. Okay. Um, we move on to other expenses. Uh, the third party administrator FSA, the program that we currently have for employees, um, based on what we've spent, we believe that going down to seventy five hundred dollars was uh, was good enough for us. Um, then we go down to planning board salaries. Um, those were decreased just based on a couple of numbers that uh, CFO went through. Um, the court stenographer, historically, we just never even touched the you know, to the the two thousand dollars that was there. We rarely, if I, well, I don't even remember the last court. Mm. Just sort of as a, a question, yeah. I mean, if there were things to come up. All right. Um, then move on, moving on to page five, the following page, to the um, construction salary. It, that's 901221951971. Uh, that again was removed, the um, salary increases based on the discussions we have yet to have uh, for the personnel requests, uh, group insurances. Um, that was the whole number based on any increases that would happen. So that was decreased by $165,000. Um, then we move on down to the police department. Uh, 103 for the civilians. Uh, we decreased that by $8,000. That's with regard to salaries. What, can I ask a question about that? That sure. was my highlight. So what is civilians exactly? Those are the administrative staff. Okay. Crossing guards? Uh, uh, no. Separate line items. No. Separate. Yeah. No, it's, you know, the secretaries and... Administrative assistants. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Following page, we move down to uniforms and clothing. Um, just again, based on some historical patterns, decrease that by three thousand uh, dollars. Medical expenses um, decrease that by two thousand dollars. Two eighteen data processing maintenance decrease that by two thousand um, dollars. I just want to highlight line item two two five purchase of vehicles. Um, one of the things, uh, and we'll have this discussion later on. The township committee. Perhaps, um, you know, in the next couple of years, based on the status of our fleet, you might want to consider decreasing that. Um, 
what one thing, and I've had this discussion with our police chief, one of the things that um, he's been looking into, and we last year bought four used vehicles from Melbourne, which were in pretty good condition, and we could use them for staging or whatever it was, and it came out to about, I want to say, $50,000 or in the range of that. And so we have to start looking at different ways of um, purchasing vehicles, too. And $85,000 might be too much for this line item, and we might have to get creative again this year. Can so we, Can we reduce it, look at reducing it right now? Then? We could. Let's, let's do it. We could. We could. Um, so, you know, I we could reduce it, let's say, to down from, uh, to 65000 and see what we could do with um, with that. I'm comfortable with that if my colleagues are. Is that fine? I'm fine with that if my colleagues are, yep. Okay. Which, just which which line is that? That is um, two twenty five. Two twenty five. Purchase a vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was I was on page seven. Two two five. <coughs> yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we should just get the vehicles from the wealthy towns who. Want right. Well, we <laughs> got two. We have. Uh, we received four. We okay. did four. <laughs> Four vehicles, so, and he's been looking on some online auctions. So, yeah, right. that's the other thing. Um, okay, and then we move on to the following page. Some line items we just removed; they hadn't been used. Uh, no need to create more space here. If we move down to the fire department, uh, line item two hundred nine. That's the other expenses medical for medical expenses. Uh, we reduced that by $3,500, just based again on some uh, historical. I know we're doing some hiring. I don't think it'll be affected um, so much with that. Um, down to training, 212. Uh, we decreased that by $1,500. Um, 217 miscellaneous building materials. Uh, we decreased that by $12,000. Um, 219 tuition reimbursement. Uh, we reduced that down to two thousand dollars, and that's just very. It's not any sort of college credit-driven courses. They're more of certifications, so that they weren't um, heavy charges. So I felt that decreasing that to two thousand dollars was just fine. All right. And then the following pages there aren't any changes. Um, I guess the the big one here, the increase, uh, page nine. If you go down to recycling. Yes. And I'm going to actually ask our CFO to explain how we've been charging that line item. And I've been here, this is my third budget year, and I, I do recall from the last two years what we've been charging into, and that was to a trust account. So it was never truly reflective here in the OE. Um, and that's why there's such a heavy increase, because our trust accounts have now depleted. Yeah, so we just quickly just go through some of those numbers. So basically what we've been doing in years past is China's been refusing to take uh, recycling from the United States and the recycling market has uh, become exceedingly volatile. Uh, we've seen increases and that's all the towns in New Jersey have seen increases in, in uh, getting rid of recycling. Five years ago you got paid to, to give them the recycling. That started to change and, and now towns are starting to need to pay to get rid of the recycling. Uh, what we've done here in a response uh, over the past few years is we've been using the budget line item and, and when we've fully expended it because there wasn't enough budgeted for it, uh, we were drawing from uh, the trust fund that we had created and we were drawing from the grant that we received from the state for recycling. Uh, this year we have uh, managed to uh, pretty much bring us to a zero balance in both of those accounts. So th there's no well to go to. Uh, the only option uh, for, for getting our recycling out of out of town is to now budget for it in our operating budget and pay for it because we have a few thousand dollars left in uh, the trust fund and uh, the grant money comes in typically uh, twice a year from the state. Uh, so in theory, that fund will get replenished, but as of today, it's not replenished and that probably won't happen until the state adopts their budget and then frees up the purse to start sending state aid, uh, both with the energy receipts and COMPRA uh, and uh, 
grants such as uh, the recycling tonnage grant. Which leads to a bigger discussion this year about our recycling practices. Also, environment that we recycle. The world has changed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's an inflection point where eventually our residents are going to say, well, it was going to cost us, you know, a quarter of a million dollars to recycle. Screw recycling. Save the money on you know, my tax dollars. I mean, do we have a sense uh, of, of how not alone we are in this? I mean, is, is this just across the board, every community in New Jersey? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, so we're not an outlier here. This now, the, the state many, many years ago uh, passed a state mandate, state pay concept. <laughs> uh, they don't follow that rule, and this is probably one of the most uh, glaring examples of how they don't follow the rules. So the recycling tonnage grant that we get in typically will wind up being somewhere around $58,000. You can see that our costs are $192,000. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. <clears throat> so we go to page 11, and that's under recreation. Let's start off with 207 kids camp supplies. Um, some of the, the the next three line items, I did decrease uh, a, a little more than uh, a couple thousand dollars. And the reason being is just again, historically, and then I, I did have a conversation with our community services di uh, director um, and just to understand some of the programming that she does. So this should not affect the programming. I just wanted to make that clear. Um, both for the kids camp, senior services, and outside janitorial services, um, and along with cultural affairs. Um, I think one of the things we have to start doing is um, what they do best is be creative. And we'll have to, um, and plus we did increase our, uh, our fees. So, so I think I wanna make sure that we do balance out better than just spend more, you know, make more but spend more. I don't think that's the right logic here. Um, then if we move down to Jitney, uh, that is page 12, the following page. We stay on 11 for a minute. Oh, sure. Uh, 9104 pages, what is that? Under our libraries. Oh, uh, that is for the, that's a staff line item. Okay. Pages in the books? Yeah, what, what kind of pages? <laughs> Not the, no, Was no, this pages. related to the minimum wage increase? Yes, I believe so. Uh -huh. minimum, these are hourly workers with the minimum wage going up in July. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Nope. Following page, uh, Jitney services salaries, we decreased that by 64,000, Joe, is that significantly, significant, not to any increase that we've increased well, requests. I'm sorry, Sonny, which That's uh, Jitney services salaries. We decreased that by $64,000. I believe there was a request, you asked me to remove all the uh, personnel requests that uh, reflects the Reflects the Jitney. Person. There was one Jitney request. Um, okay, that was significant enough to decrease that. <clears throat> okay. I don't understand that. I'm sorry. What's going on there? When when we received the uh, uh, personnel request, we originally budgeted to reflect any any request. Oh, oh I see. Okay. So those were all removed. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. That might just be it for all the changes that I've made. Let me just make sure. sure. Uh, 18, the deferred charges deficit swimming pool. Joe, you decreased that by $600, and that's just based on spending. Is that what we did? Uh, yes, the original uh, was a placeholder for an estimate, and now that we know that uh, we're $6,100, there was a slight reduction. Okay. You had a court increase on 17. Did I? I think it was just moving from one to another. But oh, it was. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
we're good on that. And the last page uh, for the pool, um, 224 clothing and uniforms, I decreased that by $1,200. And again, that's just based on some spending. So, and a lot of our um, staff is returned, so we should obviously consider recycling things. And those are all the changes that I've had. Um, any other significant changes we've made that isn't reflective here, Joe? I think the only other change that might be reflected on there is the reserve fund collected taxes because our residents uh, paid on time. More of our residents paid on time than in previous years. We were able to reduce that figure slightly. Sure. Happy with what we're doing in town. <laughs> Joe, this is this is sorry, I, Mr. Closure, I have, this is a statistic I've probably heard before, but could you give me a sense of of ballpark what percentage of our residents residential? Uh, pay their taxes to us versus the taxes coming to us from a bank or some other financial institution? Uh, it's probably roughly a 60-40 split towards banks. Okay, so, so the majority is coming from financial institutions. Correct. And, you know, to the extent we see a, uh, you know, either an increase like this year or a lag in other years in terms of people paying on time, not paying on time, is that mostly the 40% who are paying directly or do we also see trends in terms of banks and financial institutions being being late or being earlier? Does that does that tend to vary or is that pretty consistent year to year? No, ba banks are, banks are, I've never experienced a bank not paying on time. Okay. Uh, in fact, they typically will send us over a file along with a check for $5 million and it will have 140 houses or whatever that need to be processed through our system. Uh, and they typically send them in uh, usually a week to 10 days before the due date. Okay. So, so to the extent things are trending earlier or later, it's mostly the 40% that are paying us directly. Yes. Okay. And I think that this was probably a function of, and I'm, our, look, our collection rate is, is very, very good. It just happens to be really, really good this year. It was probably a function of a lot of people prepaying their taxes uh, at the end of 17 in order to take advantage of the salt. So we'll probably see our collection rate tick back slightly down uh, in this year. Fair enough. Thank you. So I want to go to the um, uncollected, page 18, 99,200. <clears throat> you said you reduced this from 15 to, I mean, 1.5 to 1.2? Correct. It doesn't show that there's been a reduction. <coughs> well, I, we, we did that before. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's done before. I, I may not it. have picked it up in this, in this particular item. Oh, you did? I may not have. Oh, okay. But it should be, if, if your sheet's saying 1.5 million. No, should, it's 1.2. No, it's, it's, it's just not red. It wasn't reflective of it. It wasn't reflective of the red. So do we add that 300 to the 262.985 number on page 20? Section. Hear yeah. that question, Tony? That 300 in addition to the 262, or is that... No, it's probably no, no. included. It is included. It, it's, a, it's already included in there. Okay. So the bottom line is since our last meetings, you, you've reduced the operating budget by roughly $263,000? Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think what I'm showing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that through these requests and what you're recommending, I had a deduction of 469528. That I'm looking at between recommended. We, and we've actually had a reduction of six hundred eighty-two thousand. I'll run it through. So okay, six, eight. any merit increases we removed that was for about thirty thousand. All new positions removed, and that was for two twenty-seven. Um, the health benefits part of it was one hundred sixty-five thousand. <laughs> and engineering capital salaries removed was what fifty-one thousand. Uh, reserve for uncollected taxes recalculated, and that was reduced by one hundred seventy-four thousand. Accumulated, accumulated leave reduced, that's for 135,000. Storm cleanup adjusted, uh, 40,000. Additional administrator cuts that I've made, those are the line items that I've made, that was 78,000. Um, reorganization, salary wage increase, that was uh, a uh, negative there, and additional expenditures inserted. 
that was an, also a negative 153. So your yeah, the total reduction was six hundred eighty-two thousand seven hundred ninety-two dollars. Yeah. So I don't get that because why does your sheet show two sixty-two? Which this sheet right here, the sheet the sheet we just went over. You go to page twenty, it shows two sixty-two. That sheet shows 262 because the initial uh, document that we were working with two weeks ago missed a few of the uh, shared services and didn't pick it up in the total. Uh, this sheet does pick it up in the total. And so what we're seeing is uh, actual numbers that show a reduction of 263, um, despite the fact that the actual cuts that were made. This, this is the problem. You're asking us to make a huge decision on spending here. We get this form and it's, you know, it looks like it's a complete list of all the expenses. And then you look at the bottom line and it's redu reduced by $262,985. Then you're telling us it's $682,000 that's been cut. I don't get the connection. So if we have roughly $300,000 in shared service agreements uh, for electrical and plumbing and code enforcement over in South Orange that weren't initially picked up, that's going to affect the, the, what you're looking at in terms of how it looks at. The, the first document that you had two weeks ago neglected to include that 300000 in the total. This document does include that 300,000 in total, but with the additional cuts that were made that Sonia just explained, that brings us to a, a net difference of 260. 280. No, I it's, thought I understood. No, no, you, no, just, no, you it's lost not. me completely now. Okay. Yeah. So, so if we no, basically, what is the reduction? Okay. The, the any extra the 262 went to 282 because we just did the 20,000 reduction in the cars, right? Because we already said we went from. I didn't take the cars out yet. I'm so. gonna put those in too. Then. It's more. So, what does this represent? That represents an accurate uh, spending plan for the township <coughs> of Maplewood. So our what's being proposed is a 47 million 536 thousand 841 dollar budget. Correct. What was the, okay, I still, yeah, you, it's very important we're all on the same page. Please. And the numbers you have don't match with the numbers we have. So we asked you to take a hard look at this again. I asked you to take a hard look mm -hmm. again. We all said this is, we got to, you know, cut this back. We don't like where we think we're going to end up with taxes. So I'm just trying to get what did we reduce from last time? From the last time we left here, you you cut about eighty thousand dollars out of the budget. Is that right? Yes, out of the OE. Right, out of the OE. We just should we just walk? Why me walk? Have. Mr. Koje, walk us through one more time just to make sure that we cognizant. We're here, guys. We'll be here until we get it done. Exactly. So, um, no, I, I just don't want to. I, I just want to be clear about what we cut from last time. And you, you read off a whole lot of numbers, which we don't have. We don't have that sheet that you read off. So it's. It, some of it is really not cuts from last time, right? Only eighty thousand dollars was cut from last time. Yes, and and in addition to the salary and wages part of it, so you're looking at all new positions, all so new marriage. Those salary and wages, those were put in there because you had assumed that we were going to approve all that. Uh, it's been my experience in most towns that uh, because the budget is really just a working document of policy setting and, and goals that have been made. Uh, and every town I've been in, everything goes in, and then the governing body, as they make their priorities and, and decide what stays in and what doesn't stay in, is how we then wind up reducing the budget. If we do it different here, I'll, I'll change my modus operandi. That's not a problem. Okay. 
get what you're reading from? I'll do that now. Well, I can, I have notes here and correct me if I'm wrong and I have no problem with that. So initially, you know, the ask was 48 million and change. Okay. With you recommend it now looking at your net increase it decrease you recommend it 47 536 the variance between that was in my math was 469 and change okay all right so that was a reduction I didn't do the percentage because it wasn't worth the time squeeze and then I looked at that year over year y over y and on a 45 versus a four on the 47 538 for this year versus the 45051 for last year I came out to a 5.5% increase. That's what okay. I have. Okay. All right. So I'm spot on, on that. Okay. 5.23. That's about that's yep. about correct. Yeah, five and a half percent. So this is this is the problem here. There's a this 262 is not the right difference between the 48 million. And the forty-seven five thirty-six. Five two eight. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, if it's you look, you look at on page twenty. Mm -hmm. So if you subtract forty-seven million five thirty-six from forty-eight million oh oh six, it's more than two sixty-two. Wait now, you're talking about what was recommended. <clears throat> Four sixty nine five twenty eight <clears throat> based what was requested and what was recommended. 469 to 520. 520. Oh, isn't this an Excel spreadsheet? I just sent it over, yeah. Why, why is that incorrect? My guess is, and this was uh, part of what we had from the initial problem two weeks ago, is that because there's almost 900 line items and because of the way the document was originally set up to total it, it missed some of the totals in the, in the total column. So that as if it was supposed to pick up, let's just say for argument's sake, 60 total items to come up with a $47 million figure, it was picking up 57 items instead of 60. And those three items uh, were then throwing off the totals from what we were originally discussing. This document now corrects any of those issues that we had the first time around, and that's what's creating the variance that we're looking at. Correct. The, the, for, the formula was uh, correct. The, the, the formula, the original formula was missing some of the cells. Correct. Uh, no, we do not. We've gone through it three times now and we've had the auditors in all week to go through it as well. So what was the 682 that you talked about earlier? That includes that shared service that we were talking about. Is that oh, it? that includes yes, the, shared service. the shared service. So between the 469, 528 and the 682, roughly something, is the shared service. It's, it's likely the three line items from the, from the shared services that we have. The, the 46 million, I'm sorry, the 47, 47 million 536, 841, where does that correspond to any ex other sheet? For the lack of a better description, the blue sheet here. Despite all these sheets. Yep, gotcha. That's the master sheet. Let's yep. call that. Okay. Okay. 
That's the one where the second column, third line down, says NJ fast FCOA code. Yes. Okay. We do. We. It's the same. I just accidentally have two. Yeah, those are the same. Um, the numbers are going to be slightly different because you have to take into consideration the final number is less the pool. And then there's a thirty thousand about a thirty thousand dollar difference because of uh, some, what is it? It's just the calculation. There was between this, the final number, the forty six million and change here, and the forty. Uh, there was a. You're saying there was a thirty thousand dollar variance. Yes. Between the two. Yes. Uh, I am still trying to find where that is in the nine hundred uh, line items that we have. <clears throat> But essentially, the document that you're the the blue sheet or the master sheet uh, that you're looking at mimics what is required to to go into the state for approval of our budget. So, once the governing body uh, has, uh, has uh, decided that we're going to go forward with a budget and we introduce it, this document that you're holding on to is the document that we would send out to the state for approval in order to have our second meeting, our hearing, and then final adoption of the budget. It takes all of the 900 some odd line items that are in the budget and consolidates them into uh, two line items, salaries and wages uh, for the one and other expenses for the other. It breaks it down by function of government. So you have administrative and executive, finance, tax assessment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So blue sheet is the number we should, we should be working with, yes. 46 million. And you're saying that does not include the pool. Right. Correct, because the pool is a standalone budget. So that's why in the sheet we just went over, it's 47.5 as opposed to 46.5. Right. Right, because the pool is roughly 900,000 and change. So we're still at a 5.23% increase in expenses. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. On the blue sheet, the legal services that goes from 219.92 and 127,000. Um, that's for the negotiations that we're going to be doing this year for all seven CBAs. Going that's, down, uh, you mean it's wait. going down 127,000? Correct. Why? Uh, last year we had yeah. last year. Let me look at that one. If I don't know how much of this is uh, public as opposed to a closed session, but last year we had an event occur that we needed to uh, pay for. Uh, that's the line item that it came out of to pay for it. Obviously, we don't anticipate. Historically been. Pardon me. Ninety-two thousand. What it's historically been. Yes. It's last year. I think when I read this last week, when you sent this this. This document where you talk about the five point two two three, I I saw where we have our challenges, right? Talked about those three points. Yes. I think um depth service being what it was, and I saw what the increase was, which makes sense. And control health benefits. Um salary wages rise at two point five. So I I see we, it really it's the OE where we have any wiggle room. On the on this blue sheet, just so we're clear, we're paying off bond principal of five million dollars. Uh, hair over, yes, sir. Yeah, well, five million ten thousand right. dollars. So that's uh, almost nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars more than last year. Correct. Our interest is roughly balanced because we were paying. Principal on oh that was a note principal okay so that's reductions all right, so we're not paying notes anymore we because we rolled any, it all over uh, to bonds we have one note currently outstanding and that is uh, under the pool utility so uh, correct we don't uh, we don't have any note payments for this year and we will obviously for 2020 uh, but at this point in time uh, that helped offset the increase that we had for the bond sale that we did back in June and. Um, the, the sewer um, increase here went from 1.7 million to 2.3 million. 
Yes, uh, it's actually one of the areas um, from a fiscally conservative perspective, it it's, makes sense from a, any port in a storm perspective, it would be one of the areas I would uh, recommend uh, exploring uh, reducing. Uh, that increase is based on the capital that we uh, have with the joint meeting for roughly $775,000. <laughs> the governing body back in October approved an additional $37 uh, for the sewer fee in order to pay that off. This budget currently reflects that we would only borrow roughly $550,000 because we would be paying roughly $250,000 from the 37 that we raised. Um, obviously, we can uh, de defer those charges uh, by borrowing the full 775 as a note and uh, eliminating the need to... Uh, pay off a third of that from this year. Um, it's not mitigating our uh, obligation, nor is it um, uh, neglecting the fact that we are collecting that money. It's just essentially postponing it until the following year in order to make that reduction. It would eat into initially our $135,000 savings for what we decided to do in terms of not going in with the joint meetings bond that they're selling um, so we won't be saving 135 over the course of three years that'll be a lesser number but there would still be a savings uh, produced so if uh, we need to make a cut that's probably one of the areas that uh, that we should be looking at because it would save us uh, roughly a quarter million dollars this year so yeah because the, the thing is we're front-loading the payments on current fee payers or taxpayers. So. Well, uh, no. Essentially, what we what we did uh, when we approved the the rate increase in October was we said we planned on bringing in, and I'm just going to use round numbers to make it simple. We we planned on bringing in a quarter million dollars for the next three years. So if we take that quarter million dollars that we're going to get roughly in June, um, when when the the bills are due, uh, we would know that we would only need to borrow. $500,000 to meet our obligation. And in the following year, we would only need to borrow $250,000 because once again, we've got $37 per, per household that, that's contributing to the fund. We're still using that money to, to pay our obligation. The difference would be that we would borrow the full 750,000 that we needed and instead use the 250,000 as a, as a means of holding down the revenue. Uh, that would increase our interest rates on the bond on the bond anticipation note that we sold. It would delay us paying down that bond anticipation note by a year. Uh, we're essentially, instead of uh, following the plan starting in the year that it's it's moving, we would be finishing it a year after it was completed. So it would be, it would be incremental cash flow into our OE, and we would still use the bond to pay it, do our obligation, and then correct. we have to come back and get a year four. Got it. Basically, we're, I mean, I'll just say what it is. We're basically asking our residents to pay ahead by we use that cash to manage the, the, the our. We're, we're lending money to ourselves, correct? Yeah, we're lending money to ourselves. We're asking our residents to hook us right. up. Right. 37 bucks. Correct. Yes. And I have a question about the capital improvement. Um, it's at fund the it's at two fifty or two hundred and fifty thousand. I think it was. Yes. Um is that does that include the current proposed capital? Yes. Correct. So that number once um, once uh, the governing body decides on a capital budget and the goals and priorities that we have for this year, um, as you reduce some of the items that may be in there the capital improvement fund would uh, commensurately reduce to reflect the 5% down payment that we have in there. The main reason for the uh, large increase in capital improvement fund is that we set aside $100,000 for our participatory budgeting. That comes out, that's in there. That comes mm -hmm. out of capital improvement fund, yes. Um. Anything else that you want to tell? Did you hand that sheet to us? On that you were reading the revenue? Uh, yes, uh, Glenn gave it. Yeah, the revenue sheets are here. No, no, no. no the oh, one the you one were reading from before. 
No, no, not the revenue. The sheet that you printed out about the, exp the thing you were reading us about the cuts. Did the one that you, you say out? you were going to send to us. Yeah, I uh, emailed it to everyone. Oh, oh well, you don't have it. Can you, yeah, you have to print, print it out? out. It's the one, it's the, it's, it, it is, it's the same one. It's the third. Drivers and actions. We're going to get that printed out for you. All right. Can we move to revenues? We yes. can. Yes, sir. Which, which sheet are we looking at? <laughs> what color? Yeah. There are two sheets for revenues. So, right? yes, that should be the document that you're looking at. Again, it mimics what we need to send <coughs> into the state in order to be approved once we introduce the budget. Uh, so I, I understand that it is a slightly different format than you're used to seeing. Uh, the issue with this particular document is uh, the state isn't really concerned with all the little items that we collect. They just want to see one big fat uh, line item. They break it down if you look at the document, section A, section B, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the challenge to putting together this document and part of the reason why we brought the auditors in this week uh, is that the way we were collecting the numbers to present to the state uh, was a little bit all over the board. Uh, Why, can I ask a question here? Because I think what's coming up, um, like previous not so best practices, but since we go through an audit every time, why were those not picked up? Do you have an opinion on that? I'm not asking you to opine on your predecessor's performance but rather, or practices, but rather, why wasn't some of this stuff picked up? I think ultimately uh, what you wind up having when an audit is done, uh, the items are chosen on a random sampling basis. They don't go through every line item by line item. It would, they'd be here all year just on us if they did that. <laughs> um, so based on the random sampling, there's, you're, you're coming up with no issues because you know, part of part of the audit process is they'll randomly pull a hundred accounts and send out a letter saying, "Please let us know how much uh, taxes you paid this year." Because they'll then take that and compare it to what we have uh, to make sure that the two match up. Uh, so my guess is it's just been uh, sheer luck that all their random samples were coming up without showing any of the uh, any of the issues uh, that that we've sort of been dealing with. Part of the problem with putting together the revenue uh, for this morning was as I was working on our annual financial statement and the revenues, they weren't matching. And so that's part of the reason why we brought the orders and they were in all week uh, with us going through this um, in order to find out why they weren't matching. Um, I'm not comfortable with explaining in public why they didn't match. Eric. Eric. Okay. But I, I can tell you that I have, I've learned a very important lesson from the mistake that I made, and that is if you ever start someplace in a mid-year, go back and check last year's work. Don't, don't assume that last year's work was correct. Not that I'm hoping that I ever have to employ that because I'm very, very happy here in Maplewood, and I hope I'm never starting mid-year anywhere else right. <laughs> in, in my career. Uh, but no that way. being said, uh, some of, some of that blame is certainly shouldered on my desk for not verifying numbers from a year ago. All right, let's move on. So uh, as, as we experienced the bad news uh, last uh, meeting, uh, which basically talked about the expenditure side of our budget and the fact that we have a roughly a $1.8 million increase with events that are largely out of our control, uh, this morning, I'm going to uh, continue the bad news, uh, and uh, we will discuss uh, our revenue issues. Uh, we will start out by uh, taking a look at noting that there's a $119,000 reduction in the uh, line item for um, uh, delinquent taxes. That is essentially us being a victim of our own success uh, because more people paid on time, 
Uh, last year, that means that this year we don't have as much money to anticipate as a revenue line item for last us. Last page. Yep, got it. Yep. Uh, fees and permits were, uh, were up, uh, but that was largely due to the success of the Recreation Department and Engineering's uh, street openings. Otherwise, uh, we've underperformed there. Uh, fines and costs were up, uh, but that was also largely due to the interest revenue that we received <laughs> on uh, investments and deposits uh, as interest rates have uh, risen. Our pilot uh, programs underperformed. Uh, that was largely uh, based on a uh, based uh, on what the auditors explained to me, a one-time <coughs> payment. Uh, and pilots are now settling into the agreements that we have with the various entities. Uh, we will obviously see uh, uh, a general trend upwards because most of our pilots are based on uh, income and so as they become more successful we will we will wind up receiving more money as well uh, the building department also underperformed uh, by roughly 164,000 uh, that may have been a function of uh, some one-time revenues that we re relied upon that uh, that uh, are no longer available to us our biggest issue uh, that we're facing on the revenue side is uh, our fund balance and the use of fund balance. Uh, last year, uh, we used $3.3 million in fund balance in order to uh, present a balanced budget to the state. Uh, the year prior to that, it was $1.9 million. Uh, roughly this year, uh, and we will have the numbers uh, confirmed by the end of next week uh, as the auditors continue some of the work that they were doing this week. Uh, but we'll be looking at roughly $750,000 that are available to us in fund balance. Uh, if you want, I can explain to you why it is so low, um, but I'm not sure if uh, you guys... I, I, I would, because, I mean, two and a half plus million dollars, as you know, as we go down the, the list of indicators, you know, makes a makes a big difference, which I guess isn't surprising, because $2.5 million is a lot of money. But yeah, I, I guess I would like to... You know, it may be also an explanation of why it was so high last year. So, so fund balance is typically replenished in, in two ways, um, actually three ways. So the, fir the first way is uh, revenues. We, the revenues that we anticipated overperformed. We, we anticipated we were only going to get $50,000 for parking meters. We wound up getting 75000 for parking meters. That $25,000 drops into fund balance. The mechanism that the state has created going back almost 100 years at this point is that uh, we are required to set up a line item called appropriation reserves. It takes anything from last year's budget uh, and sets it aside for the entire year. That's so that we can finish paying our bills that came in in January that were due in December. And then it sits in, in uh, appropriation reserves for an entire year. And at the end of the year, the CFO lapses that money back into fund balance. Uh, and then the third way that we wind up uh, putting money back into fund balance is we budget $100,000 for O&E expenses, and we didn't need it. And so we only spent $80,000 in that particular O&E line item. $20,000 would go back into fund balance. In 2007, we accelerated appropriation reserves cancellation and uh, took roughly $1.5 million from appropriation reserves in 2017 uh, to use in the 2018 budget. So what happened was this year when we went to lapse appropriation reserves, we only had $42,000 available to us. Um, we also accelerated la in last year's budget uh, the liquidation of our interfunds. The uh, easiest way to, to think of interfunds is they're essentially IOUs between the various parts of our budget. So the capital budget may owe current fund, current fund may owe the capital budget. It goes on throughout the year. At the end of the year, that winds up uh, being lapsed. Last year, we lapsed it early. So we took advantage of money that was sitting in an IOU fund and moved it into the current fund in order to help uh, balance uh, our 2018 budget. Uh, we also had, uh, speaking with the auditors this week, several items that were one-time revenues that rather than seeing them go straight into fund balance, we utilized in the 2018 budget as revenue in order to um, help address the, the expenses. So if I take those three line items that we had used, that we have previously used, and, and if we had just done it as business as normal, 
um, and lapsed it this year, we would have seen fund balance actually increase by about $125,000. So the good news is we're... we're, we're say that again, Joe? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So had we not taken advantage of accelerating <coughs> some of the things that we did on those three items and, and just let them roll out the way the state lines us up to roll it out, we would have seen fund balance increase by roughly $125,000. The $3.3 million that, that was in the, in the budget would have been $3.4 million and $25,000. Um, so the good news is we're healthy. The bad news is um, in last year's budget and in previous year's budgets, we took advantage of using this then instead of now. And so it's no longer available to us and that's why you're seeing a $750,000 number in, instead of a $3.3 .3 million number. If we take a look at, and I don't know if we distributed this, this is part of the um, crazy back sheet that we were using. Uh, it's color coded. Um, <clears throat> I'm the guy that put this together and it confuses me as well, but the, a lot of the color coding was designed to put together what we need to send down to the state and we will be uh, changing the way we do our admins budget this year so that it is a more clean and um, a linear uh, calculation but if you look at the very first uh, or second item rather uh, which says surplus the anticipated which is fund balance and we go back historically <coughs> and see that in 2017 we used roughly $1.9 million in fund balance. Uh, the prior year in 16, we used 2 million. The prior year in 15, we only used 800,000. So I'm assuming that this is 2015 all over again for us in uh, 2019 and roughly $1.8 million. So which sheet, which sheet are you looking at? You want to look at this sheet? I don't, last time yeah, I don't know if we one. distributed this sheet. This yeah. one is the one the previous one. It has all the years that Mr. Toji is referring to, where this one is only looking at year over year. And I'll hold them up so everybody's clear. Previous sheet from last meeting, and the top one is the one we got from this meeting. He's looking at a annual trend over a five-year period on this sheet, and you're looking at the year over year data. So, so what we can see from this document is that uh, the governing body through our cash management plan has adopted a policy that says, when possible, we will use only 50% of our fund balance. Yes, sir. Uh, we will use only 50% of our fund balance when possible in, uh, when we're doing our budget. And, and so if we look at the historical data, we can see that that's roughly $2 million. Somewhere between $1.8 and $2 million is, is the number that is typically landed uh, on the amount of money we've been using in fund balance to anticipate as revenue. The only anomaly to that was in 2015, we are 24. 2015. In 2015, we only used $800,000. My guess is that 2015 is a situation that is very similar to what we're facing now, and that it was the only amount that was available to us. Basically, drawn down to that level. Got it. So, there's probably no good way of projecting today where we're going to be sitting a year from now in terms of what is pay, right? Uh, no, there is a based on the based on the budget that we put together because again the drivers for for fund balance are uh, appropriation reserves, um, not spending as much as we had, had budgeted for, or bringing in more revenue than we had budgeted for. So depending on what the governing body does in terms of putting together a budget, we can reasonably predict whether or not we're going to be in the same situation. Uh, that we were in a prior year. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have set aside an appropriation reserves roughly $400,000. So in 18, we didn't spend $400,000. Uh, we now have that set aside so then any bills that were coming in and by February, we're going into March now, we shouldn't have any additional um, bills that are coming in from 2018. That money is now set aside and sitting on uh, the ability to uh, lapse that into fund balance. So if the governing body so chooses to accelerate fund balance the way we did in, in the prior year, we have $400,000 that's available to us. 
if we take that action, then, then Mr. Lundberg, I, I would be able to confidently say to you, we're going to be $400,000 short in building back our fund balance next year because we used it this year. Mm -hmm. um, revenues are a little bit shakier. Um, this particular budget maxes out pretty much every revenue line item that we've had in previous years. The state does not allow us to anticipate more revenue than we collected in the prior year uh, unless we can justify it. So one of the line items in this year's budget that we can justify is that we anticipate bringing in $2 million in, in revenue uh, for the joint sewer or, or for sewer fee collections because then we can send down the ordinance that says we increased the rate by $37, and this is why we're going up by, by $250,000. So that is the only line item uh, that you're seeing a significant increase in. Um, but again, because we're now maxing out our anticipation of where we were revenue-wise, we run the risk of it was a really good summer camp last year, and that's why we did 300000 And it's not going to be a really good summer camp this year, and we're only going to do 250000 we know that fund balance is going to wind up taking a hit because we were anticipating uh, bringing in a full amount. So, from a from a conservative budgeting perspective, typically you're you're going 90 to 95 percent of whatever you brought in last year. If we do that, these numbers become even worse. So, um, we run the risk of not being able to to replenish our fund balance again uh, next year. Uh, it's it's something that we're clearly going to, to work on. It's something that uh, throughout the year, as the administrator starts uh, taking a look at requisitions and saying, no, you need to hold off on buying that this year. That's how we will uh, nickel and dime our way back into uh, building up our fund balance. But at this point in time, um, most of the avenues that are a quick fix for fund balance uh, are not on the horizon at this point. Okay, thanks. So I know you're projecting to use $750,000 of fund balance. What is our total fund balance? We're waiting on uh, confirming that uh, figure with the auditors next week. But our fund balance, that $750,000 number is a fairly accurate number. It may be seven seventy-five, dollars maybe seven thirty. dollars uh, We're finishing up on some items that were outstanding from seventeen dollars to confirm that number. But uh, $750,000 is a, a good working number. So we're using 100% of our fund balance to put into this year? Correct. I, I, don't, I don't get it, to be honest, because um, we've, first of all, we've never used 100% of our fund balance put into the next year. Even these numbers here are not 100%. Um, Evan. No. I'm from 3.3 adopted of use of fund balances in 28. No, no, I understand that, but I'm, I, I, Doesn't doesn't seem to line up to me, but I you have the numbers and you're looking at everything. Well, part of the, part of the work that we did with the auditor this week and the journal corrective journal entries that we're making now are going to give us the ability next week to be able to run the reports to verify the numbers of where we're going. But just based on conversation and understanding debits and credits, uh, these are these are fairly accurate numbers. Is there anything that we should consider from appropriation reserves this year, at least? My, my, sensitive to the fact of we've got a very large <coughs> tax increase, and uh, we don't want to pass that on to the residents. Um, it would be more it would be more sound from a fiscal policy decision to not use the entire seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars particularly because we have maxed out all of our revenues and particularly because we have been making budget cuts. And those are two of the drivers for fixing uh, fund balance. So if, if we're cutting our budget, um, 
in order to reduce the tax levy. And we are anticipating revenues that even if we hit those numbers, it just means we've got those numbers in, it's not really building up any additional funds in, in, in the fund balance. Uh, and the fact that we only have $400,000 left in, in appropriation reserves, uh, that paints a picture of we will be hard pressed to start building up off of that 775. So even if we use that $750,000 figure, um, in all likelihood, we're just going to replace that $750,000 figure. And so we will be having uh, the same conversation here in 2020 about how we only have available to us $750,000 in fund balance. Now, Mayor, one of the recommendations that, that uh, you had made, or, or at least one of the proposals that you made, about uh, utilizing the revenue that we're getting from the $37 that we're charging for the additional uh, sewer capital would be a quarter of a million dollars that would, in theory, be able to then help us start to build up our fund balance. So it delays the process because once we're done collecting $37 for the next three years, we're still going to have to make one last $37 payment in, in 2022. Uh, but it would certainly start to put us on the right track towards uh, fixing our fund balance issue. We also know that uh, if we look at the pilot section of the uh, revenue, we also know that in the coming years, as uh, uh, Avalon Bay is probably a good example, as they continue to come online and their income continues to increase, the amount of money that they're going to provide to us uh, through the pilot agreement is also going to increase. That's the only one that's income based. Everything else is. Uh, Claris is uh, the Claris is also new and coming online this year, but they're not income based. Their uh, percentage. It's a formula. Twenty forty. Correct. So the only thing you're going to get, we're only going to get Claris. We're only going to get another sixty thousand dollars. But over the course of five years, sixty thousand dollars. Know, every year it gets eaten up. It's not like it's new money every year. It's no. Mo it's money for. It's new money for that particular year. <laughs> Correct. Uh, also, just on the Avalon, your your estimate is too low. Uh, that's that's not an estimate. That's based on actual billing that we sent out uh, from what we received. I understand, but that's not based on the agreement. We got from Avalon that their estimate is uh, a revenue of about revenue six hundred and twenty six million two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's ten percent of that, which is six. 22 minus what they pay in in uh, land taxes land taxes which i think is 233 and then five percent goes to the county correct so that should be up closer to four hundred thousand. how do we know um audit do we have yeah, some we have sort of certification of how we know yes. their income so they send that into the uh, uh to our attorney our attorney then uh haggles it out with them, the attorney then sends over the audited version that we then use to convert it into uh, a bill, a pilot bill. At that point, that's an outlier, right, that you didn't have the data for, so that changes this. Are there any more outliers that we should be aware of that will help adjust? Well, we're going to we're gonna definitely need to go back in and take a look because the number that we're, that we're looking at on this page is the number that, that's the bill that went out to them. So we're gonna we're gonna need to double check that we did not. Uh, That's the bill that went out to him last year or this year. There's the bill that went out this year. That's the wrong bill. So we we will right? let the tax collector know that we need to revisit that. What was the variance? Well, it's um, about one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, we get we got reimbursed from FEMA this year. Where does that money go? The FEMA reimbursement goes back into the existing line item that is, uh, if it's still open, if it's a reimbursement from FEMA that goes back, uh, goes back some years. further than that, then it drops into operations and gets lapsed into fund balance at the end of the year. What happened this year? We got some money from FEMA. Right, in yes. December. And this, these, are, these are some of the numbers that the auditors and I are going through to verify to see if we can't uh, increase our appropriation reserve number. 
We have another payment coming this year. Yes. One's no, um, one was from no, not Sandy after Sandy. One was the snowstorm Jonas. That was the so in, in the case of snowstorm Jones, uh, typically rather than seeing it lapse back into fund balance, because essentially what we do and the reason why we set up trusts, so we have a storm trust that gets us through storms, we're basically lending money to ourselves until the FEMA money comes in and then we put it back into the trust. So in that particular case, it would not lapse into fund balance. It would go back into replenishing the trust fund. So the other, the other um, question I have is the, the sheet that you gave us for the tax impact, the sheet. Okay. Yep. Um, you have the net value for 2019 is 3.865? Yes. Okay. Um, when we were here for, when, when we heard from the tax assessor, said that the, the assessments had gone up 22 million. This just shows a 19 million increase. I, I will check with the assessor, but uh, in all likelihood, the assessment uh, that we're using is based on taxable property, and the assessment that he may be using is based on uh, total valuation of the tax. Mm, I don't think so. But okay. You can just check on that. Because we pulled these numbers directly from the um, tax duplicates. Uh, <clears throat> just make sure. Okay, that's what he has too. Okay, it's the right number. All right, so uh, right now we're looking at an unacceptable tax increase. Yes. So whatever has to happen has to, what do we have in capital reserve, capital appropriations? Do we have anything in there? No, we, we've pretty much used um, every, every, available alternate source to us over the past couple of years. So our trust funds are down to four figure balances, our capital balance, uh, we, we used $179,000 last year uh, from that account in order to help um, balance the budget. Short of going out for new money in a bond anticipation note, there, uh, there is insufficient funds there. Let's, um, we all start to cry. Let's take, uh, let's take a moment here and we have to go in and talk to uh, about personnel. Let's see if anyone has any more questions about revenue. Let's um, get a motion to go into closed. Um, second. And Ms. Fritzen has to read. I'm going to read a statement. Whereas Chapter 8 of the Open Public Communities Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, permits exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, whereas this public body is of such opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be resolved <coughs> by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion upon any action of the specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter discussed as follows personnel. It's anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter made public. Ms. Adams? Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. All right, we're going to be uh, going into closed meeting to talk about some personnel requests, which we can't talk about in public, and then we'll be coming back out here. My guess is in about 20 minutes, so it's 10.20 now, so by quarter of 11 we'll be out here.
Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, Calmly Zone is the open public meeting. Sacred requires that all meetings public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7 provides that a governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting. And whereas desire this governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee. Township Maypoint does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in the formal agenda, act of participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise prescribed by law, does limit the public to observations of the action discussion of the governing body, all its regular and special meetings. Okay. Liz, that, sorry. You're right. Second. Ms. Adams. Mr. Daffis. Here. Mr. Lemberg. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Okay, Mayor, you're in open. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we've um, come back. We've uh, had to go line by line through some personnel requests, so it took a little longer than we thought. Um, we now have that settled. Uh, we have, we were talking about revenue and, um, I think we're, we are of the opinion that we'd like the CFO and our administrator to go back and fine tune the revenue. We think there's some opportunity to look at the, uh, sewer tax, the, uh, making sure we got the right number for the pilot for Avalon. Yes, sir. Um, and anything else? And we're anxiously awaiting the information from the auditor, correct? We are, so that we can confirm these numbers and make sure that we're working with uh, reliable data. Okay. At the moment, our tax increase is um, not something that we feel is sustainable, and we want to reduce that. We've asked the administrator um, to take another look at our um, non-salary costs and hold them flat to 2018 and you'll take a look at that you've 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 done a good job so far in cutting that back and we're looking for you to do more of that um let's also check on the revenue with the fema grant when that's yes, expected and how that's going to play a role in this and i think we will at some point before we leave today, pass a motion that um, we're going to implement the hiring freeze uh, and any position that becomes open that needs to be filled will have to be justified to the township committee and we'll have to approve that. In fact, if we, if we, if we can get agreement, we can do that right now. Yes, absolutely. Second. So let's call the roll on that. Ms. Adams. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lemberg? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And the other uh, recommendation you made to us, Sonia, was um, cutting back one police car or, or 20000 out of the police car. $20,000 out of the police vehicle budget line item. Right. Okay. And that's agreeable to everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. So I think that is where we're at with... Um, with all of that, and I think right now we're going to take a look at our capital requests. Yep. Let's see how long it takes us to find that page. Uh, uh, I've had two. Uh, yeah. This new one is I got right. it. I got it's it. Bigger. <laughs> all we got to do for next year is get this every page. So we know what column is. Okay, so so you want to take us through this? Sure. Okay. So the, I'll give you the top heavy part of the of, of this budget, which is the engineering. Um, <laughs> but needed. Right. Uh, we'll start with the first engineering request, um, <coughs> and that is for environmental improvements at various locations. That's sort of a um, cushion department uh, uh, line item for anything that we would have that we need to remediate. Um, but specifically, this is for the Tenneco site, the DPW. 
uh, to Firehouse Number One and Three Maple Crest Park. And that's for twenty-five thousand dollars. So let me just, in, for the sake of moving faster, let's not go through everyone like that unless people have an issue because we've okay. already gone through Sorry. this. Sure, no problem. So let's just. Why don't we just go to the ones first where you have a where i have any have impact a, you're yeah. talking about a reduction and then we'll sure. come back and see what township committee people have as they like to make it. first okay. reduction is road. my first reduction my first reduction is in 1903 and that's for a reduction of fifty thousand dollars from a request of 850 to eight hundred thousand dollars i've been trying to work with the engineer to nip down the list of streets i think one of the things we want to talk about long term is how, how do we, what do we determine in terms of streets? Are we talking about a certain amount of streets? Are we talking about the money part of it? And how much of a deep dive are we gonna get into the infrastructure part? And I'm talking about curbs, I'm talking about sewer right. improvements. So he did supply you with a new list of streets, which is pretty much on to par. Don't forget that we do have previous capital accounts. So if there's difference in numbers, let's say, <coughs> You know, between between zero and fifty thousand, I think that should we'll, well have we enough to cover. At our last engineering public works meeting, about um, asking the engineer what he can do differently in the improvement to right. reduce the cost, and I, so I think the fifty you're recommending is in line with that conversation too. Correct. Right. So I would be in favor of the. Okay. Uh, the next one is 1904, and that's at the Woodland Building. <laughs> Have a conversation. I yeah, go ahead. Make your recommendation. Well, my recommendation across the board is to, at the moment, not make any improvements other than what we are doing now and what we've done, which is the elevator. And the second is right now the external staircase. We've managed to clean up the third floor. The only thing that I would consider um, in the third floor is the bathroom, uh, but that's already in the building improvements line item of 200,000, which is the following line item. Uh, I think we have to talk about long-term for all of our buildings and what we are expecting them to become or not become. Um, so I don't think we should be putting any more money into, into the woodland at the moment. We've spent, I think, enough since we've acquired it. Can we actually visit line item 1905 and again now sure. that and understand what that 200,000 is getting us um, packets for the capital? I'd like to look at that 200K and understand what that means. That means for every township owned building, whatever sort of improvement that needs uh, this building uh, with the roofs, with the roof and the issue we've been having. Right. Uh, the Bergdorf has some leakage issues. Um, we had to fix Bergdorf yeah, right. twice. Twice, yeah. Two different locations on the roof of Bergdorf, Mr. McGee, and we've also have leaks at the woodland. There. That's still all in there. All right, so I'm just going to pull out the engineering tab here and we can go through it. E, section E for everybody who has their finders. <coughs> 1905. I thought that at the, at the meeting with the engineer, we Took the twenty-five thousand from the woodland, and you put it and in. Put there. it into the seventy right, in the into the building improvement. That's correct. That yes. was my right. understanding. Too, as as but then, know. and then we made that seventy-five, and then somehow it got increased to two hundred thousand. Because of the roof issues we've had, okay. we're having here. Okay. Right, which he indicated before he had not. He right. didn't plan Including for it, correct. Or plan. Right. Yes. He's pretty detailed. He's good, though. Yeah, he's, he's very methodical. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I think that it's. General building repairs, various locations. In there, right, in there is there's air conditioning for the Bergdorf building. Uh, it's not in here. Well, that, that was the initial, well, um, that was the updated docu uh, capital documents that, was that were previously sent to you probably back in December. 
So since since the original, let's say this is what this is what he had described. Project includes air conditioning for the Bergdorf, includes the great auditorium. This will allow performances to occur, to occur all year long, including through the summer. A uh, separate thermostat and zone will be used to control the temperature and depend on them. So that's a hundred thousand dollar cost. Um, I'm going to have to ask him if there's going to be a reduction to this because of the 150 he actually added to that. Oh. Where the, well, actually, he only added uh, 50,000, not 150. Yeah, because this one says 50. And then general building repairs, various locations, $50,000. These repairs can be used to acquire buildings, uh, roofs, plaster, structural, mechanical. So. It's all in 1905. Yes. Bless you. So I'm um, sorry. So well, not to confuse everybody, the original request was for 150, right. not 50. Right. But it says he he believes that of that 25 of that he could use to work with the woodland. See, we were not going to work with the woodland. And right, well. No, we said that anything at the woodland would just be part of the part of the building, building. improvement. Overall building to putting a separate amount for the woodland. This is what we, we had. Nineteen oh four had twenty five thousand for the woodland. Right. We said no. Let's take that twenty five thousand and move it into nineteen oh five. Correct. But you're saying that in nineteen oh five to us had fifty thousand. You're saying that was an error. That's an error. It was originally one fifty, not fifty. So can we raise it to seventy five? So it should be one seventy five. Now somehow it became two hundred thousand. Right, so that was my point. So now we can <laughs> because you're that. talking about the twenty-five. Yeah, so we'll go. we'll reduce it to one seventy-five. Correct. Thank How about you. that? That's the okay. All right. Uh, oh my. I'm wide awake. I think we're all awake. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, we've only changed the engineering. Yeah, you changed numbers. the capital improvement by about thirteen cents. So, <laughs> but that's okay. Everything counts. That's this right. Year, right. That's right. Everything counts. All right. Nineteen oh six. Okay. Uh, this is the. Um, Burnett Burnett Avenue. Now this is uh, a grant. Now this is a reimbursable grant. Is that correct? So we have to put the money out. Correct. The way the DOT, uh, the way OD gives us the grant, they'll <coughs> give us notification that there's an award. It has an amount that's attached to it, uh, and then typically we move forward with the project and then submit to uh, get reimbursed. There's a slightly extra additional, small additional costs because of some of the testing that they require in order to reimburse us. Um, what we have been doing in the past is anticipating it as revenue and moving forward, but we should be anticipating it or we should be setting it up so that it is essentially a bond ordinance with permission to borrow for it because it's reimbursable. And then when we get reimbursed, reduce the amount that uh, we would look to borrow if we needed to. And what's the downside of that, as opposed to putting it in as a receivable? Uh, if we put it in as a receivable, the, the, the DOT historically never gives you what they say they award you. So there's going to be $600,000 they say they award you, uh, and then we get reimbursed for $588,000. But because we had anticipated getting a full six hundred, dollars we now have a $12,000 hole in our budget that we need to make up someplace else. <clears throat> so it's safer the way you're doing it. It's uh, how most towns do it. Oh, no. <laughs> but if it's what you recommend, then, and I understand your logic. Uh, particularly because on a lot of these projects, uh, we decide as we're moving forward that we want to upgrade the project itself and that we want to also in Belgian block curbing or whatever the slight change may be. Setting it aside and the bond ordinance is fully funded helps us then when we receive our reimbursement from the DOT to reduce the amount. So now we actually wind up borrowing $50,000 because we decided to do $50,000 worth of improvements that weren't originally anticipated off the grant. Right. Now, if we were to get these grants, we don't get paid. These are reimbursable, so we don't get the check before. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, 1907. There's no change. 1908, right. you're recommending zero for the Greenway? Yes. Uh, I think this is something that could wait. Um, not, okay. Having talked about our budgetary constraints, obviously, it's, it speaks for itself. And 1910, you're bringing the traffic coming from 100 to 75? Right. And we talked about an engineering public works also about just taking a, a better look at the NV5 report and just 
taking this at, at, a, at a slower pace versus so aggressively. Plus, we're working with the county, and let's see what else they can do for us yeah, in terms of traffic. Yeah. Right. Well, it's... Okay, next is 1911. You um, sewer improvement, reduced that by 50? Yes. Uh, just, again, this is the sort of uh, overall budget. And, and let's see what we could do with 200,000 versus 250. Okay, next I'm sorry, Mayor, if I just uh, may chime in, uh, this is not related to the discharge or the surcharge. No, uh, no, okay. no. Uh, that's different. Uh, that that's becoming uh, yeah. The, that nightmare is starting to grow, and I'm sure uh, Paul will have something to say. Uh, 1914. This is the underground storage tank. Okay, so the <laughs> coverage ends August 22nd of 2020. Uh, essentially, we've had long, long discussions about this, and we'll, we'll have an overall plan how we would roll this out. Last year, we put in $100,000 to start this off, do the planning of it. Um, in talking to the engineer, this is going to be broken out into two phases. So we're going to take care of the removal and remediation, which has a, a rough estimate of, let's say, six fifty to 700000 And then the other part of it is to replace them with new above-ground storage tanks. Right now, we should be concerned about getting rid of them and remediating. And we could do that this year. So let's consider reducing this actually to right. half. And then in the 2020 budget, we'll talk about the rest of it. And, and then with the planning, we're going to talk about fuel right. uh, and how we're going to we figure that out, out, where we're going to go with it, uh, whatever it may be. So we'll line that up. But right we're now... bring this to 625? To six, yeah, let's do it 625. Yeah. I think, and I was trying to get there with the information provided, mm -hmm. maybe, <coughs> five, maybe six, but definitely, because there's estimations for each phase of the project, seven phases, so then we can... Oh, we're saying somewhere between 625 and 650. Yeah, let's just say 650, 625. I would feel more comfortable with 650. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. Yes. You guys missed that in the engineering. No, I, I caught the first. Uh, Memorial Shelter House. We got no change there. Okay, we basketball, no, tennis courts. We have no changes made, but I just wanted to make a note that we have to, we're re looking at the CDDG, what we're actually applying for. Right. And there might be different consideration based on some of the restrictions of CDBG money. CDBG use, money. Right. So um, we're still applying for the full amount. We're just restructuring what it is exactly we're applying for. Right, because we were told, for instance, that we could use it for bathroom. the bathrooms because right. they needed to be existing facilities that Correct. were being operated. And it's a floodplain zone, so right. all that. All right. Mayor, can we go back to 1912, the 200,000 for the papers? I, you know, I know we talked about this last year, and we just was over 200, 200, but I'm reading the, the, the description. There's some great area in there. You know, it's includes base bid alternates plus extra charges. I don't know what these extra charges are, and I'd like to know how much you cut in there as well. Uh, I'm not sure. There could be some on site issues. Unanticipated. Unanticipated, and yeah, we'll have to. Sewers or gas lines. Right. That's, what's, that's what that's about. That's what that's for. Yes. This is the last phase yes. of it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> um, and then uh, maybe let's talk about the basketball and tennis courts and what it is we envision happening. We did talk about last time of that 300,000. Actually, the engineer said that the entire project would be an estimate of 450 versus right, 500,000. So we want to reduce that. Um, so would we still take 300 from OSTF and just put 150, Mr. Cloje? Or or, or or would we, I mean, with the $50,000 that the engineer is saying of the 500000 we won't need, would we reduce our capital or would we reduce our open space trust fund allocation? 
My recommendation would be to treat the open space trust fund similar to the way we would treat a DOT grant. And so that would say, let's fully bond for the project um, so that in the event that something happened with open space, that they wound up using it and the money wasn't there and available to us, um, we, we would still be able to move forward with the project. That being said, I also understand the point that as we bond for this, we need to come up with our 5% down payment. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you on this because no. what, what's going to happen? This is a tax. People pay this tax. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, a parcel of land became available to us and we wanted to use open space money to purchase that. No, it's, it's, no, not it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We should use, <laughs> yeah. that's the whole purpose of having the open space because it's a cash amount. Right. We know yes. it's, a, it's coming in. Right. We shouldn't be bonding stuff that's coming in. And, 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 and well, OSTF funds can't be spent without our approval, right? Right. So it's, a, it's not as though someone else is going to spend that money right. from under us. Right. Correct. Okay. So money's there and we, we can. Okay. So, so okay. So I'll, I'll go back to my question and maybe I'll throw it to, to the group then. If we're, if we're reducing the number here from 500,000 to 450,000, are we still taking 300,000 allocated from OSTF and just reducing the capital to 150? Or are we reducing the OSTF to 250 and keeping the 200 in capital? Yeah, what do we have? Capital. Yeah. Reducing capital. Reducing, Reducing capital. capital. Okay. And it, it, as long as the money's there, I'm okay. Well, I guess the other question is, do we want? Do is it necessary to do both at the same time? That's yeah. That's a twenty. It, it's a thirty thousand dollars saving. Let's say. I think it was about thirty thousand dollars more. It'll cost us for for this. For right. Uh, to do to do the tennis right. right. Yeah. After so. Like we might want to just, and if and it, you know, and, and you know, g given the condition of that court and having a, you know, a basically unplayable court next to a brand new facility, I think that we'd end up just doing it next year anyway. So, I think some of the programming too could be expanded to the, uh, to the to the courts. So you, yeah, I think this would be a, con uh, yeah, considerable. So we're bringing job. this down to one hundred and fifty. Yes. So 150 from capital, 300,000 from OSTF. Right. right. Yes. Okay. I'm good. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. Where else? Are you back Going down. turnout gear? It's 1902. You're I saying push so it off to 2020. 1902. What? For it's which fire department? department. Fire 1902. department. We're on 1901. We 1901, you have no change. Right. Yep. Okay. So 1902. Okay. Okay. Then you have uh, fire headquarters addition. No. No. You said no to that. No. Right. Okay. And then uh, in police department, purchase of police vehicles. This is the pickup. You're saying no. Right. And you given. You said you spoken to the chief. Correct. And he's going to look for an alternative. Yes. 19 in uh, the police department 1901 then you're recommending everything through except to public works 1902 you don't recommend dump trucks i do not it is a heavy expense this year uh, and we need to better assess our well we have a good assessment of our vehicles but i think we need i think they're at we're at the point we're okay right now this is more of a uh, in 1905, the street sweeper? Correct. So uh, just a little bit about the street sweeper. So one, one is fully operable. And I did speak to the mechanic regarding the second one. It sort of comes and goes. I think we could still get another good solid year out of it with just fixing it. Uh, uh, but I think it, we haven't had any issues with regard to the street sweeper. Uh, it, so I don't think we could, we could live with it for the year. I can again. Can we go back to police? We go through all and then come back to the ones. Okay, yeah, I got some. Want to go back to I just want to deal with uh, the Sonia's cuts first. Yeah. Um. Okay, participatory budgeting. Uh, Mayor, uh, that is. For the programming, we were talking about to have right. a citizen-based, uh, 
I, I would just like to say if that is something the township would consider uh, on to next year versus this year. Oh, definitely. Yes. Or reducing it. Or reducing it. Thirty-five percent. What are we, what are we voting on? Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, have one category. We could just have the seventy-five. But why does this have to be in the capital improvement fund? Because of the way the bond ordinance gets written, it's uh, difficult for us uh, to adopt the capital uh, budget. And then we move forward with a bond ordinance that says, here's how we're funding the capital budget. And because these projects wouldn't be solidified until after all of that's been put into place, um, getting the bond worded correctly in order to cover whoever won in the participatory budgeting uh, makes it somewhat uh, problematic. By fully funding it through the capital improvement fund, uh, all we need to do is simply pass a resolution that amends our capital budget <coughs> and we're ready to go. So what are we going to do with this? I think we should go down to half, at least. I would say 50. Oh. I can live to 50. I think we should leave something. I think we should try to, we should start we should it. Try starting doing this, yeah. yeah. And we could also just go back and tinker with the numbers in the application. Um, okay, the next change you have is recreation. So you, you've sent us something on fleet. You have, you've done this whole thing around. A, a fleet pool, right. carpools. Okay. Vehicle right. policy. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so we're not buying that, and the woodland, you've cut that out from recreation. Right, and also the Maplewood pool renovation, and that's oh, yeah, I'm sorry. to reflect yeah. the the number here for 750 just reflects the pool filtration system. So the hundred thousand dollars we're going to get from Avalon for improvements to the pool. How does that play into this? So it's specifically aligned as improvements to the pool. It would offset uh, the amount uh, that we would be uh, going out to bond for in order to do the improvement to the pool. If that's how it's specifically worded. I thought it was a $100,000 contribution to the pool period. So this is right. All right, so that's different than it's $100,000 for, for uh, improvements. It's a hundred thousand dollar contribution to the pool so that the town can use it as it sees fit for the pool right we would be able to put that money into the pool's fund balance and create a, a enough of a cushion to uh, anticipate fund balance as a revenue source to make sure the pool's self-liquidating and then this would not require a five percent down payment on any of the of the work that we do right i think that's what we want to do yeah right yes that would be my recommendation so are we leaving this in here? We should come out of here. Should come right? out of here, right? Uh, because it's set up as a, a because it's uh, it's set up specifically for the pool. I would pull it out and, and uh, recommend, even though there'd be some additional costs with bond council and, and everyone else, I would set it up as a completely separate ordinance related to the pool. It becomes easier to track, uh, and it becomes easier to sell down the road if we need to. Right. So you're going to look at a pretty significant increase just based on this and then the the storage tanks and some of the little changes overall say that again overall budget is going to the capital improvement fund it's going to go down yes just with removing this and the storage tanks yes yeah. and maybe some other things maybe some other things <laughs> um okay now we're down to the woodland under recreation 1904 you're not recommending the forty thousand. No. And then the rest of this, your recommendations, except for uh, township clerk, um, chairs and blinds. Right. 10,000. Right. We've had some preliminary quotes here from a vendor. And on the blinds, I want to say 3,000? 3, 3,000. So, yeah. and then with chairs? Still getting quotes on the chairs but maybe it could be 7500 let's just if we want to that would be take fair. it down from 10 to 7500 okay the blinds were much less than i had originally stated no kidding <laughs> <laughs> but it'll only last a week sorry okay 
So let's just leave that there right now, and let's go back and see uh, Mr. McGee. You had some just, yeah, machetes. I had my machete, machete out. So let's. So the one that I wanted to talk about is actually Police 19-04 for the say, the cameras. Police? Yes, police and the cameras. Hang on. Um, what tab is it? It's uh, page five. At the bottom right hand corner of the page. The actual yeah. tab we're going to go take a look at. It is. Oh my God, this is driving me crazy. I know. It, it is like. Uh, police is F. It's upside down. It's like. And uh, it's number. Okay. Fire. Police. Four. I can take. 1904 in tab F. Yes. Oh, the cameras. Yeah. Under. All right, now I think we need to look at some of these. Revisit it and see if it makes sense for this year. All right, cameras enhanced department abilities. So, are you requesting that there be a change? To That's what we're looking at it. Okay. Yeah, I need to, I, I want to understand how likely to get a better sense of the number of cameras, the location of the camera versus our current camera platform. You know, is it something that we could critical? For these, are, these are 10 cameras. Yeah. These are. Um, these are the pole mounted cameras yeah. that are put around town. Right. I know there's tons of cameras in town. Right? Yeah. I'm asking, we need 10 more. For this yeah, right. No, these next are new. This is in addition yeah. to. Yeah. I, would, I, would like to, I would like to kill this one, do it next year. They're, uh, the ones we have, aren't they remountable? So we could move these around too, the ones we currently have. We have, I think, four, I want to say, that are movable. There, there are a few. We have some that are movable, but most of them are stationed on posts. Right, and my impression, yeah, my impression was that we wanted some additional ones. They have helped with investigations. Oh, I know they help, but I mean. But if that's something that we don't, yeah. I'm not in favor of cutting the public safety camera thing. I'm in favor of getting more information about this number. Okay. Maybe there's some room, but I'm not in favor of cutting public safety. I mean, we're paying people to to make beautiful murals in town. I'm not going to cut public safety cameras. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I just <laughs> let's be real. You know, I mean, one of the uh, certainly you know more disturbing criminal events that happened in this town last year, uh, you know, was was. You know what was solved because of cameras and probably wouldn't have been or at least wouldn't have been nearly as quickly without the cameras so I, mean, I, I i i think i think this is a pretty low yeah. amount for you know for the safety it can provide so well, I, I i i i'd be in favor of keeping it in so i i will argue against it because i'm saying that we already have those cameras in place these are 10 incremental cameras we're not saying reducing our cameras. We're saying add 10 more to the plethora of cameras already in town. Right. And do we need 10 more cameras on top of the, how many do we have right now? 25, 45? We need to know how many cameras we already have and do we need to add 10 more cameras? Yeah, okay, let's get more information before we say we're not in favor of something. Right. That's a question mark. Yeah, chief can provide that information. Okay, do you have anything else? Yeah, I think the chief is just gonna say he recommends that these additional areas be covered. Oh, well, we just yeah. need to know where they do are. Do we have four cameras or do we have 400 cameras? Like how many exactly. And do we need yeah. five instead of 10? I mean, I mean, we're trying to cut money here, guys. Yeah, I think we should also announce to the public exactly where the cameras are, you know. Because that's a no, public no, safety. No, 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 I'm joking oh, okay. because okay. of how this conversation is oh, going. Yes, I'm being yes. snarky. Oh, okay. snarky. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, Okay, let me see. If, do you have any more, Frank, that you wanted to uh, put out there? I have another. Go ahead. I'll, I'll come back. Let me pull my data here. Okay. Nancy. Fire Command, Fire 1901, man vehicle. I feel like, I know he sent pictures. Fire, right? I feel right? like we could, yeah, it's $55,000. I'm not convinced that we can't live with it, the existing, for another year maybe next year. I mean, we're talking about this year trying to be frugal. We're already sure. in. We're, we've already talked about a vehicle policy, so this would align with that. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, just being at the public safety meeting, we had uh, a, a very in-depth review of that vehicle. It is poorly, it's inadequate to serve our residents. It is absolutely inadequate to serve our residents. Why? Uh, basically, it, it's, it's too small. The equipment doesn't fit in it. Uh, they're using bungee cords to keep stuff in place. The radios are inadequate. Uh, there's uh, there's not enough. 
room for even more than one person to sit in there. They have to be relatively thin at that. Um, I understand it is, that. But and can so they the, live with it for another year? No, we can't. I, 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 I would like more information about that. I mean, why? I, I guess I don't. I mean, they did. They responded to over 1,300 incidences. We just gave out awards for uh, merit to our fire department because of their exemplary and heroic service using the current equipment. We can't live another, what is it, 12, less than 12 months before we do this again without this shiny brand new vehicle? I, I, would, I would say that we were very fortunate with the Avalon fire. I was there, I was present. Um, and we were very fortunate. I think that if we had any incidents like that again with the type of, that type of equipment, we'd be in trouble. Okay, I'd, I'd, I'd like to. I'm, I'm with Mr. McGee just for the record. Yeah, I'd like to know more about that. I'm not against it. What are you I'm looking just for? Saying. So I just go back to them. We have, you know, we have. We're not going to get much more than what's in yeah. the book here already. He's, he's, you know, he gave us his four paragraphs why we need it. Right. So you're either in favor of it or not. Yeah. I just don't see why we can't live. Talking about that every year after this year is going to get a little is going to start getting better and better and this year is a but in, I terms, believe, in terms of capital improvements we're talking about stuff we're going to pay for over the next couple of correct, decades anyway correct. so i mean you know if, if, if this was an operating i might agree with you but i think right. with it being capital still not in favor of it but well I, I would be in favor of it i think i would just like to know how critical it is I don't think that is in it's the critical. It's critical. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I it's critical. They, they, they brought. Uh, <laughs> I know yeah, you guys saw it, and it's a beautiful. Place. I haven't seen it. Not no, I haven't seen it. The mayor didn't see it, but <laughs> I went out and looked. And I was. I didn't want to be part of the, the sales pictures. pitch. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I agree we should buy it. So I think there's three of us that agree, at least yeah. three of us, to buy it. So we should just move on. They're not going to give us any more information that other than. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the only mean, you know, if, if you wanted to, you could arrange to go see the current one and ask them to bring in. Uh, usually, Captain Alvarez can call up some. I don't, you know what? I don't really, I don't think that's a good idea because does that mean uh, DPW is going to bring a sweet sweeper in front of our house to show <laughs> us how bad it is? I think that's a terrible idea to open this up to send salespeople. That's why I didn't want to go out there. The person there is a salesperson or trying to promote something i don't think that's a good idea to put ourselves as a best practice put ourselves out there to make judgments listening to salespeople about capital improvements that's why we have professional staff well i mean Great. i mean just i mean for the record the person that came with the uh command vehicle was the chief of another fire department yeah and he's, he's also a salesperson i think i think the the bottom line is though that when you look at the equipment that we do have i can see so I think since three of us are in favor of it, we should move forward. Yeah. And I also agree with the, uh, I mean, the cameras, we can get more information, but I would agree to purchase the cameras too. We have people who come before us and ask for cameras in their neighborhoods, and this is a way to <clears throat> solve them. But we can wait for more information on that. Well, if we have three people in favor of the cameras, we can go. I would be in favor of the cameras. I'm in favor of the cameras. There you go. So cameras, cameras, yes, the truck, uh, the car, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to be cut, to be added? We, we've covered everything I had. We cut about 900 out of here. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I'm sorry, no. 650, 350, so that's, that's a million, okay. So I think we I think we want to get this. We are paying off. Our bond is five million dollars. Joe, is that right? Is that what our payment is this year? Five million dollars. Yes, sir. So I don't think we should bond for more than we're paying off. I don't think we should incur more debt. Right, and I think our practice has been eighty. Eighty percent, but I understand that. But we're paying off five million. I think we should. I think we're pretty close to bringing to making this about five million. 
I think we should we should give you a direction to see if you can skim it down. Keep this to five million, so sure. that if we're paying off five million, we're not incurring more than five million. Absolutely. Is that is that okay? Yep. Yep. So you might need to tinker ten thousand, twenty thousand here or there. You can work sure. with code. I mean, work with uh, engineering. If, if if we're going to put uh, a five million dollar bond ordinance up. 5% of that is $250,000 in the capital improvement fund. Right, and we have that amount in there. Which also included $100,000 for the participatory budgeting. That's 50. We cut right. that to 50. So I'm at $300,000, but I only budgeted for 250. Right. So we'll increase that to 300. Right. Okay. Well, plus, plus you got um, less, less whatever we get from a yeah, we, <laughs> we, so, we have to pull out the. So 250 may wind up becoming 265 or something. 750. I didn't even pull out the 750 for the pool, I don't think. Because that's going to be in a separate thing, right? That'll be, so, yeah, right. Yes. So that's more than, that's more than. Yeah, it's going to be more than. Yeah, it's more than that. More than almost 2 so million. So we might, like, be at the high four. Yeah. yeah. So if we can go to the 80%, that yeah. would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, as far as today, is there anything else that people wanted to accomplish other than going over this? And... So I think, I, I guess our most important message to the two of you yeah. is to work on the expenses and the revenue to bring down what's proposed here. And I think we we appreciate your trying to get us best uh, get on the best practices and and policies, and I we, I think we do that. But um, yeah, over maybe phasing it in. So, however, you know, maybe there's little tweaks here and there we can look at. No, that's how, that's what you do. No, no, no. You tweak the budget here and there. You're looking for whatever you can. I mean, our goal is to keep the taxes down and provide services that are that folks expect. Mayor, do you want these by the next township committee meeting? We'll reserve, let's say, 20 minutes to talk about some of the additional changes in tax credit. Yeah, we could do that at, at the next township meeting. Okay. Probably not a long agenda. Right, just keep it in. Anything else? I have nothing else, Mr. Mayor. Anyone in the public want to speak? There's no one here, but we'll ask anyway. Get any questions? No, probably not. We'll tag us online. All right. Uh, so we've dealt with the capital budget. And I guess open space we've already dealt with, but now yes. we know how that 300 is coming out of uh, open space for right. the basketball tennis courts. Okay. From open space. Yeah, I can't yeah. find it in this. I, I just looked at it. Hang Look on. It oh shit! What did I do with it? Now go through it. Oh what? Oh what? You'll give us updated. Yeah. Version of this. You'll give us updates of everything, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, updates of everything. Right. And you'll give us an yeah, update of the open space trust fund too. Yep. Okay. All right. Can we get a motion to adjourn? Yes. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone.